Welcome to Success Superstars, episode number 85, and my special guest, Steve Harney from Keeping Current Matters. Steve, welcome. Thank you very much, Mark. I appreciate you uh, inviting me on. It's an honor that I'm here. And, uh, you know, I understand that your agents get a lot out of these episodes. You're doing a great job on that. So I am truly honored that you asked me to come on uh, your, uh, your situation here. So. Yeah, well, I appreciate you taking the time to do that. And, you know, you are a success story, and that's, that's what this is all about, a success superstar. So we're here to celebrate you and your success. Uh, you know, uh, Keeping Current Matters has made such a difference uh, in the lives of agents all across the country. And we'll get into that a little bit later. But what did you do before you created and founded Keeping Current Matters? Um, well, actually, directly before that, I've been in real estate for about 35 years. I was an agent for the first eight years of that 35 years. I was a top agent in my marketplace for my region for the last seven of those eight years. So I did a lot of real estate. So I had a lot of kitchen tables, took a lot of listings, you know, brought a lot of people around my car to show houses. Before we had all this internet, you know, we actually had to go and show them every single house. And that was the first time they saw it. The, uh, then from there, I became uh, a manager of um, um, Big Brand, uh, one of the offices of Big Brand, um, a national brand, and we became the number two office in that brand wow. as far as transactions were concerned. Then uh, I decided to start my own real estate company, and back in 1995, we opened a company up in New York, which we grew to 13 offices and 550 agents. That company I sold in 2004, and to be honest with you, Mark, I retired at that point in time. I decided that I was just going to, you know, go watch Judge Judy and, and Oprah and enjoy it. Uh, the challenge was I, I couldn't be retired. I, I just, you know, I had the itch that I wanted to still be in the real estate business to some degree. And uh, that was about 2005, 2006. And the, um, you know, I was always a data guy, even when I was an agent. Uh, and I'm not going to say I was a data nerd, but I liked looking at the numbers. And the numbers were really scaring me. Uh, so I decided to go out and try to help some of my uh, friends who own big brokerages saying, hey, listen, guys, I know everything looks really, really good right now. But look at these numbers. This is going to turn pretty quick. And when it turns, it might get real ugly. Mm -hmm. Some listened, some didn't. Um, but, you know, we helped a lot of people. And then... The ones who didn't listen when you know things did get ugly, I, I kept on going. So I became like a speaker across the country. And every time I was out speaking, the, every agent had the same exact question. How do I get your PowerPoint? Because I want to explain that to my customers, what's actually happening in the market. And that was the birth of KCM. Wow. So it basically well, ended up started, taking places. Yeah, they wanted it. So. Yeah, they basically wanted your, your slides and material and then – you created, you, you found a, in a sense, a, a problem in the marketplace and created a solution. And that's I wish I was that smart. I found the problem. Got it. And I thought the solution was me going out. But what the, you know, the top agents in the country were looking for is they didn't want, you know, just to say, well, Steve said this. They wanted to, you know, we did a good job of explaining, and we still do at KCM, explaining like what's happening in the market, why it's happening. And, you know, we can simply and effectively explain those two things. Right. So what the agents wanted was, you know, that situation. So I wish I could say I created KCM. Right. The agents across the country actually created it because they said, stop what you're doing and teach us that stuff. Right. So uh, they were a little smarter than I was, but I was smart enough to listen to them. So you, you listened and, and came back and retooled and, and created this amazing solution. Now, uh, yeah, we, we, we're, we're pretty amazed at what's taking place now. So. Yeah, so we'll talk a little bit about that success in a minute. I, I know you have, you know, a large number of subscribers and, uh, you know, lives have actually been changed because of some of this data. But if you look back on, you know, obviously you're a serial entrepreneur, you've had success, you know, selling real estate, managing real estate, owning uh, a company, and now creating this amazing solution. If you look back on all of that, uh, any regrets, anything you would do differently? No, nah, that's funny you should ask that question. The only thing I might do is do everything sooner and quicker. Mm. Uh, you know, I would have, oh, no, everything I've done in my life, I probably would have done that. Um, but to be frank with you, you know, um, when I go to see my doctor, my doctor said, why don't you take it easy? You, you have, you're pretty well set for life from a, whole nine yards, from a financial standpoint. He goes, and now you can go do what you want to do. When in reality, for the last 35 years, every day I woke up, I did exactly what I wanted to do. 
this is in my blood, this is in my heart, it pumps through me. So the, uh, do I have any regrets I did it? No, I, I consider myself very, very lucky that I had the opportunity to every day wake up and, and still to this day, every day I wake up and do exactly what I love to do. So uh, no regrets whatsoever. All outside of, we probably should have done it a little bit quicker and we probably should have done it a little bit sooner and we probably should have done it a little bit faster. You know, it, it's funny, as it it I talk to entrepreneurs like yourself, uh, every day, you know, there's a common trait, you know, that they wish they had done it quicker, sooner. Taking action is one of the key things that I think you've done. And you're just saying, hey, I wish I would have taken that action sooner, quicker, faster. Well, so let's get into KCM a little bit. Tell us, tell us what KCM does and, and how it helps the agent and the consumer. All right, as I mentioned before, when I was an agent, I did like to look at the data and I would bring the data into my listing presentations. I would bring the data into my buyer consultations uh, saying, listen, this is what's happening in the market right now. This is what I think prices are going to do going forward based on the, these numbers. Uh, this is what I think might happen when interest rates, this is what people are projecting are going to go forward. So you might want to buy now instead of waiting for rates to go up. Uh, so there was, you know, I always kind of had that, that niche. And it be, that's what enabled me to become, you know, the top agent in my region. You know, right. nobody else was doing that. And then um, when I opened my own real estate company and we grew that to 550 agents, we had a meeting once a month where we actually went over the data in the marketplace mm -hmm. so that the agents could, again, intelligently talk to uh, their buyers and sellers about not just how pretty the kitchen was or, you know, what the, you know, view was from the street. Uh, we talked to them about like what's taking place in the market and what's happening. Uh, so that was kind of already in my blood. That's what I had done as an agent. That's what I had done as a manager. That's what I had done as a company owner. Um, what I didn't realize is that in good times, that's crucially important to buyers and sellers to know what's really taking place in difficult times. It becomes much more than crucially important. All right. So, and a perfect example of that is in 2008, there was a lot of what took place there that didn't need to take place. If our industry and the mortgage industry was a little bit more adept at reading signs and reading data and reading numbers, I think that we could have prevented uh, or avoided some of the devastation you know, that families went through at that point in time. So that really, you know, we kind of caught it late, you know, uh, as far as actually acting on it. I think we did, as KCM, help a lot of agents, help a lot of families through that process. And for example, like right now, there's a lot of talk about you know economic slowdown, the word recession is in like every headline in every business newspaper. Um, we want to make sure that the agents understand what that means. We want to make sure that they do definitely understand it doesn't mean housing crisis um, and why that is. So what we are trying to do now is KCM, and we're, we're accomplishing it. We're very proud of it. We're helping agents really be that trusted advisor. You know, we believe strongly that, you know, in difficult times, the great people in that industry, whatever industry it is, they step up. Mm -hmm. They don't hide. They don't jump under their bed. They're not afraid to meet customers. They actually go at it. They go at the challenges because they know what's taking place. Uh, so they remove a lot of the fear and they can remove the fear of their clients. So that's kind of what KCM really does right now. We're trying to help agents remove the fear out of consumers because as we're going into probably the, what's going to be the, the most highly contested presidential election in American history, there's going to be all sorts of crazy headlines from both sides of the aisle coming out. And that's going to cause a lot of confusion. Yeah. And so let's get into the solution a little bit. So it's pretty elegant. It is very elegant, actually. How, how does the agent take advantage of it and how do you make it uh, easy for them to, uh, get a hold of this data and provide insights to the consumer. All right. Uh, the, what we did is, you know, we've really built the product. The product used to be pretty much a slide, a PowerPoint slideshow at the very beginning that we would give out explaining what the market. Now we have personalized posts where you have great blog posts written every single day that the agents can personalize with their, their picture, their contact information uh, and put that out there. We have uh, a, mo a monthly market um, update where we uh, multi market report where we explain exactly what's taking place in the market like going into November one of the things that we would want to do is make sure 
that sellers don't wait until the spring to put the house on the market, which so many do. Because in reality, if you look at the numbers, the best time for them to get the house on the market is right now, mm -hmm. right, going into the winter. And we proved that out by using stats and showing what's taken place over the last several years. You know, uh, the buyer demand is still there, but if they wait until the spring, they're competing against, you know, every other seller that waited until the spring to put the house on the market. Uh, so there's a shortage of inventory now, and there's an increase in buyer demand right now. So you put those two things together, this is a perfect time. We'll put together six, seven, eight slides uh, that will help the, the uh, agent explain to the consumer that waiting until the spring makes no sense. All right. And it's not like they're telling them, oh, no, you should listen now because, you know, this is the best thing to do. Because unless you prove it, you know, a lot of times a buyer or seller will think, well, you have an agenda and you're just meeting your agenda by telling me that. Right. Um, and, and we actually prove it out. So, yeah. so you prove it with data. So look, looking back over your, you know, successful career, both as an agent, you know, as a manager, as an owner, as an entrepreneur creating this amazing solution, you know, what things would you share with the audience about success, about, um, you know, making it happen uh, in the marketplace? Well, it's funny. When I first became an agent, it was the first time I had a commission sales job. Like, I mean, mm -hmm. I wasn't getting a paycheck. Right. I was going to make a commission based on you know, how much success I had. So I went to my pop, my pop to this day, and I've met a lot of great people, men and women, your, you, for you, for example, you know, Tom Ferry, I, I've met a lot of very, very successful people in and outside the industry. Sometimes I come to the lake house and we spend a couple of days together just talking, you know, life. Um, and, but still to this day, the smartest person I ever met was my pop. Mm -hmm. All right. And he was a truck driver. He was not any, anything elaborate. But when I went into commission sales, I went to him and said, dad, listen, you know, now I'm not going to get a paycheck. I'm going to be actually commissioned. He goes, All right, this is what you need to do. He said, always worry about the person sitting in front of you more than you worry about yourself. Hmm. So as an agent, he said, worry about that family sitting there, whether they're buying or selling a house, more than you're worried about your commission. Because the way to guarantee that you're going to get your commission is to make sure they understand you're worried about them. You'll get referrals, you'll do this, you know, and he went through the whole thing. And I was like, wow, that was a pretty simple process. Right. And that's what made me realize in real estate, it's so cool because we, um, we make more money by helping more people. Mm -hmm. So if we forget about the money and just help as many people as we can help, the money kind of takes care of itself. So when I became a manager, the, uh, I said to my father, I said, Dad, listen, now I'm a manager and you know, I'm going to get paid bonuses based on how well the office does. And he goes, all right, let me give you a first rule. Worry more about the person sitting in front of you than you do about yourself. And he explained, now those agents, you have to make sure you're helping them build their business. So it kept on going, it kept on going. And so then when I became, and I'm, I was a little bit stupid on it because I kept on going back to him. And as I own my company, dad, now I own a real estate company. What's the best advice you can give me for success? And he sit me down and he said, worry about the people sitting in front of you more than you worry about yourself. He always went back to the same thing. Now, he wasn't there um, when we, actually, that was through management. I, I'm sorry. He wasn't there when I actually opened the company, mm. but I know that when I opened, you know, that, that, that 550 agent company, when we first started it, I looked up to heaven and, and I said, dad, I think I got it right. Worry about the people sitting in front of me more than I worry about myself. So I'm going to tell anyone that's in any business, worry about the customer, worry about that family sitting in front of you more than you're worried about what you're going to do. Cause that's the guarantee that you'll have all the success in the world. But they know that. And especially in, in our type of business, because the more families you help, the more you get people to trust you, the more people come to you. Yeah. Sound advice there from a industry veteran. Worry about the people in front of you more than yourself. Always worry about them more. Yeah. Well, so Steve, I am so honored that you spent some time with us. I know the audience is going to get great value uh, out of this episode. And I know, um, if they're interested in KCM, they can go to trykcm.com slash JPAR and check it out, uh, which I'd encourage you to do. And we appreciate all that you're doing for the industry uh, and for consumers all across the country. Steve, thank you for joining us today. Listen, you know, thank you very much. And if I can say one last thing, you know, anyone in the business right now, things are a little bit crazy. The headlines are nuts and everything. 
uh, until the next election, it's going to continue to be that way. Please jump in, know your market, know what's going on. If there was ever a time that you were going to say, I'm going to be an expert in the market and help those families that way, now is the time to do that. So I don't care if you join KCM today and can cancel it the day of the election. Please make sure that for that period of time, you know what's going on. Because we can, to that, this, this economic slowdown is going to be anything like 2008. We know that already. But whatever it is, we can make sure it doesn't have as, as negative an impact if we can take away some of the fear and some of the panic of the consumer. And the only way to do that is intelligently explain simply and effectively what's actually taking place. Well, so, well, guys, you have a moral obligation to do that. Let's go out and make sure we get it done. Because yeah. really the only thing we know is that it is going to be a um, pretty contentious election period, pro probably the most contentious one we've ever seen in history. And so, yeah, uh, there's, there's two things we know. We're on the, the longest economic recovery in American history, American economic history. So sooner or later, it's going to slow down. And that's really what the recession is. The economy just slows down. It's nothing to be afraid of. And again, we have all the slides and all the stats to prove that. Right. All right. You know, the last time we had a recession was caused by the housing market. So obviously the housing market was crushed. But the f four recessions prior to that, the housing market wasn't crushed. As a matter of fact, three of those four prices went up beautifully. You know, I appreciate it nicely. So we, we explain that as we, as we go through it. So, but between, there's going to be a slowdown coming somewhere down the road, not too far from now. And the presidential election, presidential election coming up, like you just mentioned, you better be on top of what you're doing right now. Yeah. It'll separate you from all your competitors. For sure. Well, appreciate you uh, spending the time and we'll see you on another episode of Success Superstars real soon.